What's going on YouTube? Uh, this is a rather lengthy four-part series in which we will attempt to repair, uh, overhaul, and modify this 1974 Fender Silverface Twin Reverb. Uh, in the first video, uh, I attempted to explain how tubes work. Uh, we repaired uh, the bias circuit. Uh, we encountered a, lo a low volume issue that will be addressed. Uh, I've replaced the power cord and we've overhauled the amp by replacing the electrolytic and filter capacitors. In this video, uh, I will attempt to uh, try to explain how to measure and modify the bias and cathode and grid bias amps. And we will also modify uh, the silver face uh, circuitry to allow the bias to be changed uh, more easily by uh, adding a bias pot. So biasing in a nutshell is a uh, process that ensures that the tubes are running at their best. Uh, it affects tone depending on how they're biased. It affects the longevity as well. Uh, if you bias them too cold, um, they will last a lot longer. Um, you, your tone may suffer because of it. Uh, you can bias them uh, hot as well. You may like that a little better, but it may shorten the lifespan of the tube. Um, ideally, uh, you want them set somewhere in the middle. Biasing also attempts to solve a uh, balancing issue uh, that arises. Um, back in the day in the manufacturing process, um, th let's say the internal resistance of this tube uh, may, be, may be different than that tube. Uh, when these tubes are installed into the amplifier, uh, that would cause maybe this, this tube to run uh, harder than, than this tube. We want both tubes uh, working the same amount and Fender has come up with uh, a couple clever ways to attempt to solve this issue. Uh, however, it does have its drawbacks in which case I'm gonna uh, kind of walk you through uh, how Fender engineers uh, took that issue on in the silver-faced uh, twin reverb uh, line of amplifiers. I'm also going to discuss how Fender uh, took care of biasing in their Blackface series of amplifiers and uh, talk about the positives and why we might want to uh, modify the circuitry in this silver face uh, to resemble that of a Blackface uh, Fender amplifier. Again, there's a couple different ways that we can bias the amplifier. Uh, one is through the cathode, uh, the other is through the grid. Uh, this is a schematic of an old Fender Champ. Uh, it happens to be uh, cathode biased. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through this schematic so you, you can understand kind of what you're looking at and then uh, how to accurately measure and modify uh, the bias in this amp. So I'm not going to go into great detail about the uh, component values uh, in the schematic or why certain parts are there. I'm just going to kind of uh, help you follow along uh, the signal path uh, that your guitar would take and uh, a little bit about the uh, power supply. So we're going to start over here in the lower left corner. Uh, as some of you have, may have guessed, um, this is the uh, two two prong outlet that you would plug into the to the wall. Uh, comes through, hits your power switch, uh, goes to your power transformer. Uh, on the secondary side, it comes out, hits your uh, rectifier tube. Uh, the purpose of this is to change alternating current into direct current. After the rectifier tube, uh, we'll come over to the filter capacitors. Uh, the purpose of these filter capacitors is to further smooth out uh, alternating current ripple that's left over from your rectifier tube. After the signal leaves the filter capacitors, um, we've got a very clean direct current and you can see if we follow along here's our tube it's split into two halves because a 12AX, 12ax7 actually has the equivalent of two tubes inside of it so we've got uh, one half of the 12ax7 and then uh, the, the other one on the right um, this signal this direct current signal 
comes through and is hitting the plates of each side of the tube. If we follow along, we can also see that it hits the plate of our output tube. Uh, this is our uh, preamp tube. We also have here at the bottom, out of the uh, power transformer, this says to all 6.3 volt filaments and the pilot light. So there's a, a wire that actually goes to the tubes from the power transformer uh, and heats up that, uh, that cathode, as we were talking about earlier, and that's uh, responsible for um, boiling off those electrons that uh, want to go to the plate. As far as your guitar signal goes, we'll plug in uh, over here. We'll hit the grid of the tube uh, that controls the amount of current that goes through that tube giving us amplification. So it comes from our guitar, it hits the grid, it comes out of the uh, first half of the 12AX7, and it goes to the grid of the second half of the uh, first 12AX7, out of the plate, out of the uh, grid, or into the grid of our, of our power tube. Uh, out of there, it comes out of the plate, goes to our power transformer that converts our signal into um, a high current uh, signal that will be able to push a, a speaker cone. Now as far as biasing this amplifier goes, um, here's our power tube. This is what we're going to be biasing. Uh, we see the symbol for our cathode here and uh, attached to the cathode is a resistor to ground. Attached is your bypass capacitor. We'll not talk about that at this point. We're just focusing on uh, the biasing this tube. So this 470 ohm resistor is what's responsible for biasing this amplifier. Now the twin is uh, actually a uh, grid bias. Um, I'm going to go through the steps required to calculate and modify uh, the bias on this amp uh, just in case you have an amp that's cathode biased and could use this information. Uh, after that uh, we'll go over how to uh, calculate and modify the bias in a uh, grid biased amp. So before you move forward with biasing your amp, uh, there's a critical piece of information uh, that you will need, and that is the maximum plate dissipation of your output tubes. Um, most tubes are different. Uh, that's something that you can look up online. Um, for example, uh, I believe this 6V6 in the old Champ is, uh, I think the maximum plate dissipation value is 14 watts. And uh, that just simply means how hot the tube is going to get, how much heat it dissipates uh, in watts. Um, and so we just don't want to exceed the maximum plate dissipation. We most uh, some people bias uh, at 60 to 80 percent of that maximum plate dissipation. Um, I'm I like to bias at around uh, 70 70 percent. So. Um, We'll go through some uh, some figures and uh, some equations that will help you uh, gather the required info you need to figure out what your uh, plate dissipation is. Uh, so if you look up online uh, the equation to calculate plate dissipation, you'll get this scary figure here: uh, P equals I, or I'm sorry, P equals E times I, and that translates basically to watts equal volts times amps. Um, we could further simplify this by saying plate dissipation is equal to the plate current in amps times the plate voltage uh, in volts. Again, the uh, required information that you would need to calculate your plate dissipation is plate voltage and uh, the plate current. Uh, plate voltage is rather straightforward. 
uh, to calculate. Um, I don't unfortunately have uh, a Fender Champ uh, with me or else I would uh, demonstrate how to do this. Um, however, uh, the plate voltage um, of your output tubes um, usually is connected to, I think it's pin uh, three. What you can do is find a pin diagram for your tube and look uh, where the pl which pin the plate is is connected to, and uh, you would run a lead on the multimeter. Uh, you would um, set your multimeter to uh, direct current and uh, put the positive lead on the uh, pin three and you would put the negative lead on the chassis and simply read that measurement. Uh, the plate current is a little bit more tricky uh, simply for the fact that uh, the multimeter would actually need to be in circuit or in line uh, with, the, uh, with the plate um, and in order, to, in order to do that uh, you would have to sever the wire um, to the plate and put your multimeter in between it. Since we don't want to do that, uh, we're going to have to use uh, Ohm's Law to indirectly measure the plate current. So to measure plate current, we need to know two things. Uh, one is what is the resistance of R1 or uh, the, bias, uh, the bias resistor here. Uh, coming off the cathode of the 6V6 and then what is the voltage drop of that bias resistor so how many volts is this actually reducing so you would go through and attach your multimeter leads on either side of this resistor and measure the resistance in ohms write that down the amp should be off for this procedure. Um, once you've written that down, you'll measure the voltage drop of, of that resistor. Um, the amp will need to be on. You will set your multimeter to DC volts while the amp is on and warmed up and measure uh, that reading and write that down as well. Once you have those two values, you'll use this equation uh, to calculate uh, the plate current. Uh, that is, uh, A is for current, uh, V is your voltage drop uh, over R, uh, your resistance. So current is voltage drop divided by the resistance. It should also be noted uh, that this method works uh, for single-ended uh, amplifiers uh, only and uh, single ended just means that there's only one output tube uh, once you start getting into uh, dual output tubes or a quartet of output tubes uh, the formula uh, does change a little bit uh, later on I will go through and uh, show those differences if you do happen to have a, uh, a dual output a tube configuration or a quartet as well. So unfortunately since I didn't have an amplifier that was cathode biased um, I had to come up with these numbers uh, kind of out of thin air so they may or may not resemble uh, the values that you may actually find in a uh, vintage Fender amp but uh, for sake of demonstration I do have some values already populated um, so in the schematic it did say that that bias resistor should read 470 ohms if you're working on your tube amp and you have and you're following along with the schematic uh, do not assume that that value is correct um, most resistors have a tolerance value in which um, even brand new it could read um, within 10 20 percent of the advertised value um, and it's actually uh, color coded um, you can kind of get a resistor color code um, chart which shows um, mostly on the end the uh, or yeah tolerance so you got plus and minus 10 plus and minus 5 
two, one, uh, you can actually uh, purchase the value that the exact value that you're looking for. So uh, it's pretty common that if you're expecting a 470 ohm resistor, it may read low, as low as 450 or high, uh, you know, as 500. It just depends. And especially the old uh, carbon uh, composition resistors uh, found in tube amps tend to increase in their resistance uh, as time goes on. So never assume that the advertised resistance value in a capacitor on a schematic is true. Go ahead and get in there and actually measure the correct value. And so I've kind of simulated this by saying um, the resistance value of, of our bias resistor is 492 ohms. Um, came out of thin air, voltage drop happens to be 23.8 volts. Uh, plate voltage was 352 again uh, out of thin air. So again, we use this uh, equation to calculate our plate current. Um, so V over R, so V is our voltage drop, was 23.8, so 23.8 uh, divided by uh, a resistance value of 492 ohms on our bias resistor. Get a calculator, do the calculations. We would end up with uh, 0.0483 amps or if you move the decimal place three uh, place or decimal point three places to the right, it will provide you with the milliamp value. Uh, so we could say 48 milliamps. Um, and that would be your plate current. So we're finally at the end. Um, we now have all the necessary information uh, required to calculate our plate dissipation. We use uh, this equation, plate dissipation, uh, equals plate voltage in volts by your plate current in amps. Uh, note that that's not milliamps, it has to be in amps. So we'll do 352 times 0 0.0483 would give us our plate dissipation of 17 watts. Uh, the maximum plate dissipation for a 6V6 tube, uh, from what I've uh, researched online, seems to be 14 watts, in which case uh, we are over maximum plate dissipation. Now since we're over our maximum plate dissipation, um, we would increase uh, the value of this bias resistor. Um, if we were under and we were biased to cold, uh, we would reduce this value. All right, so I'd like to talk about how to bias uh, double-ended cathode-biased amps. Um, the procedure to calculate plate dissipation uh, is exactly the same. However, if we take a look at our uh, 6V6 output tubes, um, you'll notice Here's our, here's our bias resistor uh, to ground. Uh, this, these two tubes share this bias resistor. So when you do your plate current calculations, um, it sees both, both of these tubes. And so your plate current will appear to be double. So uh, once you do your calculations, uh, divide that number uh, by two. Once you do that, you'll receive the average plate current of the two. Uh, now with the configuration of the Fender Champ, uh, we only have to worry about one output tube and uh, so we've done our calculations on uh, plate current, plate dissipation. We know exactly what's going on inside that tube so we can bias it to its optimum. Now, fortunately, with the Fender Deluxe configuration, uh, we do have one resistor uh, providing bias to both uh, uh, tubes. And again, unfortunately, we can only calculate the average um, plate dissipation of these tubes. Uh, this gets a bit dangerous. Um, back in the day, a lot of tubes uh, varied their internal resistance. And so that's why a set of match tubes, if you've ever heard that, is, is kind of preferred. Uh, the reason being, if 
we provide one bias uh, line to both tubes, we want them to react in a similar manner. Uh, the more matched your tubes are, the more that they will perform uh, uh, like the other. Um, it gets a little dangerous because if we only calculate the average, we could have potentially one tube uh, maybe doing 70% of the work and the other only doing 30. Uh, we don't know that because we're not able to calculate uh, the plate dissipation for each individual tube. Uh, if you do find yourself in a position where you do have uh, a severely mismatched set of tubes, uh, you can actually do a simple modification. Uh, you could actually uh, sever this connection here. I think it's pin 8 is the cathode for the 6V6. Um, you can run this uh, bias resistor and coupling cap. Uh, to pin 8 of one 6V6 tube. Uh, you would then uh, add another resistor and bypass cap and run it to pin 8 of this uh, output tube. Uh, if you do that modification, you will then be able to um, accurately measure uh, plate dissipation for uh, each tube and if, if one tube is off, uh, you can change the, res the resistance value of uh, just one side of your push-pull push configuration. This is a schematic of the, uh, the Fender Twin that we're working on. Um, now this one's a little bit different as you can see. Here's the, uh, the output uh, section. Uh, we've got four tubes and they're not cathode biased. Uh, they are grid biased. If we, if we look here, here's one of the output tubes. Uh, comes out of pin 8 and that's the cathode. Uh, now that now goes directly to ground. Uh, before uh, we were expecting to see a uh, resistor and a coupling cap configuration uh, in this amplifier uh, that is gone. Now to calculate plate dissipation in this amp there was a couple prerequisites that we're going to need uh, from earlier. Uh, to do our calculations. Um, to calculate plate dissipation, we need to, uh, to know the plate voltage and the plate current. Um, in order to get plate current, we needed to know the resistance of R1, which was our bias resistor, and the voltage drop of that resistor to use Ohm's law to do our calculations. Again, we now have no uh, bias resistors to do our calculations. So we're going to have to get these figures uh, using a different method. Now it is worth noting uh, a couple differences uh, between the Fender Twin and let's say this Deluxe here. This Deluxe um, is what's called a double-ended uh, amplifier just meaning that there's uh, two uh, output tubes. On the, this is a blown up uh, section of the schematic for the Fender Twin. You'll notice that there is a quartet of output tubes. Now this simply means that the output section, you can think of these two tubes as being grouped together and these two tubes being grouped together. Uh, we've got our guitar input signal here. Uh, it branches off and hits the grid of this tube. It also branches off and hits the grid of that tube. Um, if we look at our plates here, uh, they're joined here uh, to the output tube. And the same thing occurs uh, on this other section. Here's our guitar, input grid, guitar, input grid, and then the plates share a connection on both sides. So when we do our calculations, um, it's the exact same way we would do it uh, with, let's say, a deluxe with, or a double-ended amplifier. However, when we do our calculations, uh, since these two share uh, this connection, we will divide our values uh, by two once we do c calculate uh, plate d dissipation. Now to get back on track, um, to calculate the plate current in amps, uh, we needed the voltage drop uh, divided by the resistance. Uh, uh, now originally this was from the uh, bias resistor. Uh, once again we look here um, from our cathodes uh, it is connected directly to ground so we do not have that bias uh, resistor. Now to get these values we're going to need the resistance uh, 
and the voltage drop, but again, we don't have it from that bias resistor. So we're actually gonna do it a, a different uh, method using what's called a transformer resistance method. Now the way we do this is we measure uh, the resistance from one half of this output transformer. So that would be the center tap uh, to uh, uh, to the plate. We would we would uh, put our multimeter on the center tap and the plate and measure in ohms the resistance of that. That takes care of our resistance in this equation. Uh, the next thing we need is the voltage drop. So we will measure uh, the voltage drop from this half of the output transformer from the plate to the center tap and we will write those down. We will then do the exact same thing from uh, on the other half of this output transformer. We will connect to the center tap and uh, measure the resistance uh, to the plate and then the voltage drop from the center tap uh, to the plate as well. Uh, once we have those two figures, uh, we can then uh, calculate the uh, plate current in amps, and I will demonstrate that now. So once again, before I uh, reach my hands into the amp, um, I'm always going to uh, check for uh, any leftover uh, voltage left in the amp, uh, so I've got my uh, uh, discharge stick connected to ground. Um, I can use my uh, center or um, high tension here and bleed off any residual charge. Pop that standby before I uh, connect my uh, multimeter leads. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is measure the uh, resistance of one half of the output transformer. So that'll be from my center tap to the plate, and I'm gonna uh, measure that in ohms. So we're connected to center tap of the output transformer over here to pin three of the outermost set of tubes. Uh, we come to our multimeter and go over to uh, ohms and we allow it to settle. I'm gonna say 35.4 uh, ohms of resistance on the outermost uh, winding of the output transformer. Now I also have to calculate the uh, voltage drop from center tap uh, to the plate as well. Um, so since I'm connected to that already, uh, I'm going to switch my meter over to DC volts and uh, power the amp on and uh, write that measurement down as well since I'm already there. All right, so we're still connected to the center tap and then uh, pin three of the outermost set of tubes. Um, the amp is warm. I will flip the uh, standby switch and once again, I am in uh, DC volts. Um, it's taking this measurement now and I will allow that to settle. Once I have my figure, um, I will uh, write that down as well. All right, so we're settling down. Uh, I'm gonna say to 0.65, I'm gonna say 0.65 uh, volts. So we can also use the uh, average feature of the fluke. What did I say, 0.65. Let's see what the average is. I'm gonna go with 0.6, I'm gonna stick with 0.65. All right, so we've got the resistance of one half of the output transformer and the voltage drop of that same uh, half. Uh, so we're gonna do the plate uh, voltage next, so I'll do plate to cathode on that. That should be uh, pin three to pin eight, and then we'll write that down. Uh, once again, it's very important after each measurement and when I move the uh, leads around, I'll go through and I will uh, discharge uh, the filter capacitors uh, as, as well. So every time you move those leads, uh, do uh, drain the filter capacitors and make to make this amp safe uh, to work on.
All right, so we're connected uh, to pin three and pin eight. Um, the amp is warming up. Uh, we'll flip the standby switch and we'll observe our plate current for the outermost um, set of output tubes on the plates. We'll allow that to settle down, take a measure and write that down. So it looks like we've settled down to around 395.8 volts, so we'll write that down. All right, so we've gone through and gathered all the necessary uh, values uh, required to calculate our uh, dissipation for one half of the, uh, the output set of tubes. Uh, we're actually going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So since I've already done it, uh, demonstrated this once uh, for one side, uh, it's just we just repeat that exact same process for uh, the other side. And so I'm going to do those measurements and write those down and then we'll do our calculations next. All right, so we have all the required values uh, needed to uh, calculate our plate current and our uh, dissipation as well. So we'll do that next. All right, now that we have our required values uh, needed to do our calculations, all we got to do is uh, plug in our numbers. Uh, so for plate current in amps, um, we needed to know the voltage drop and the uh, resistance. So this was done on the outer set of tubes. So uh, the voltage drop uh, for that half of the output transformer winding was 0.65 uh, volts. Uh, the resistance for that output, or the uh, the resistance for that half of the output transformer's winding, was 35.4 uh, ohms. We divide that, and we get 0 0.018 amps. If we uh, move the decimal point three places to the right, we can say that as 18 milliamps. Now, since those outer tubes are connected in parallel, um, they show uh, double values. So we'll need to uh, divide our current by two, uh, giving us 0 0.009. Another way we could say that is nine milliamps on average per tube. Moving on to plate dissipation, uh, all we needed to know was the uh, plate voltage and the plate current in amps, and we uh, times those together. So plate dissipation equals uh, our plate voltage, which was 395.8 volts, and we times that by our uh, milliamps, which is in amps, which is 0 0.009. That gives us our plate dissipation of 3.56 watts. We would then repeat this process for the inner set of tubes, which I've already done, and we are left with 1.75 watts. It's also worth noting that the maximum plate dissipation of a 6L6GC tube is 30 watts. You can see here that I'm nowhere near that. Now on these old silver face amps, um, we've got what is called a uh, bias balance pot. And it does not allow us to adjust the actual bias of these tubes. What it does is it allows us to adjust the balance of the tube. So let's say if I turn this one way, these tubes would uh, be affected uh, negatively while these would be affected positively and then the reverse. So uh, I'm going to say that that's why we've got such a big difference here in our uh, plate dissipation is because of where that uh, by, or, uh, balance pot is set. Now it's not uncommon for an amplifier to be out of adjustment. Um, as far as the bias goes. Um, in this case, let's say in the uh, Fender Deluxe, if the uh, bias was out, we would simply uh, 
uh, change the value of our bias resistor uh, to get it where where we want it. Unfortunately, in the case of the silver face uh, twin reverb, uh, this bias adjustment does not allow us to adjust the actual bias uh, value of the output tubes. The actual bias is controlled from this resistor here, this 15K uh, resistor. That's our uh, bias adjustment. Uh, now, if I wanted to adjust this bias, um, I would just simply change uh, the value of that resistor. However, um, for the ease of serviceability of this amp moving forward, uh, I am going to convert this silver face uh, amplifier into that of a black face circuit uh, in the bias area. So what I'm going to do is actually add a potentiometer uh, to this circuit here, which would allow me to, on the fly, change the equivalent of this resistor. In addition to adding a bias potentiometer, um, again, you'll, you'll see that these uh, cathodes are uh, connected directly to ground. Um, this is where our uh, re bias resistor would be in a cathode biased amp. Um, rather than use the output transformer uh, resistor method to calculate our bias moving forward, what I'm going to do is install one ohm resistors uh, here between the cathode and ground. That will allow me to do my measurements much easier and individually calculate uh, the bias of each tube instead of settling for an average of for each side of these tubes. Another thing that you can do is um, look up online a tube bias calculator and then you would just find uh, the model of your tubes you're using. For me it's the 6L6 uh, GCs. We would enter the plate to cathode voltage. I think that was 395.8 uh, and calculate. Uh, these figures down here will give you kind of a rough estimate of what your readings should be as far as the milliamps uh, go. So I'm in this category here, class AB, fixed bias. 50% um, of max dissipation is uh, 37.9. Um, as you remember, I think we were at uh, what was it? Nine milliamps. So again, we're nowhere near close to there. Um, you can actually safely um, bias that amp up to 53 milliamps. Um, I might go somewhere in between 50 and 60, depending on um, how it sounds once I get uh, this thing back in order. So uh, it's just a good kind of handy tool to kind of give you some roundabout figures uh, for you to work with. Uh, so to demonstrate what's going on exactly with this bias potentiometer, um, I've actually got uh, two multimeters hooked up. Uh, this mass deck is connected to the grid of the outermost tube, uh, tube set, and the fluke is hooked up to the grid of the innermost tube set at, um, I think it is pin three. So that is the plate, and that is uh, displaying the actual negative voltage, which is the actual bias uh, for the tube, which uh, kind of sets that speed limit uh, for, uh, for the current. Now, ideally, in the way that uh, the black face circuit um, worked was that if I uh, adjusted uh, that potentiometer, uh, these two values would either increase or decrease uh, by the same amount. Um, in this case, if I were to adjust that potentiometer, uh, this side may rise while that side falls or the opposite. So I'm going to try to uh, demonstrate that for you now. Uh, we'll turn it uh, counterclockwise and watch the multimeter. All right, so as I turn counterclockwise, it looks like the uh, outermost tubes uh, is receiving 
more resistance uh, to ground, which impedes the flow of negative uh, current to the to the tubes, um, which would allow the uh, tube to run hotter. Uh, if I go back and turn it the other way, you see the opposite happen. So as you can see, I cannot bring both of these up or down. I can only affect um, these tube sets in a balancing manner, and that's not something what I want. That's not something that I want to do um, at this point. I need uh, to greatly reduce the um, the negative voltage to these grids to get these uh, tubes running a little bit hotter. The first thing that I'm going to do to uh, convert this silver face bias circuit to resemble that of a black face is to uh, replace the actual bias uh, resistor. So right now that's a 15K uh, resistor. I'm going to throw in a, a 10K uh, resistor to give myself a little bit more wiggle room if um, we do a tube swap. Um, I think it will make uh, the ease of serviceability in the future uh, a little bit better. Uh, after I swap out the resistor, I'm going to install this Borns, uh, I think it's a 50K uh, a potentiometer, a multi-turn potentiometer. So we're going to solder this guy in and this will allow me to um, evenly um, adjust the negative voltage uh, that's been sent, that's being sent to, to all the tubes as opposed to just balance them. I'm actually not going to take out the uh, the bias balance pot. Um, I'm just going to install this uh, bias uh, pot on top of it. Um, so when I get done, I should be able to adjust, actually adjust the bias, and still have a bias uh, balance as well. All right. So just finished uh, installing uh, the actual bias potentiometer on top of the old uh, balance pot. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, before I flip this thing on and throw 120 volts at it, I'm going to ramp it up slow with a variac. And, and again, all I'm looking for uh, is negative voltage uh, actually on the grids of these uh, output tubes. So I've got this these uh, leads connected to, uh, I think it's pin 5, uh, the control grids of the output tubes. Um, and I've got two separate uh, multimeters uh, attached for the inner and outer set of tubes. And so again, we'll ramp this up slow and just look for the presence of uh, negative voltage before we throw 120 at it. Um, I don't want to, uh, if I've done this incorrectly, I don't want to red plate uh, the tubes again. All right, so once again, I've got the amp uh, plugged into a current limiter. Uh, the current limiter uh, comes over here and uh, hits the uh, variac. So uh, the variac is down. Um, I'll turn that on. Come over to the uh, power switch um, of these twin. Um, we should have no voltage going to it yet because the variac is down. So I'll turn that up to around uh, 25 volts and we'll see what the multimeter is reading. So we're looking good. It looks like we've got uh, voltage on uh, each side uh, of the tubes. So we're going to go a little further with this. I'm going to actually bring this up um, pretty slowly and again it's kind of the, the almost like that first video. We're bringing up the amp real slow, watching negative uh, voltage rise. Um, I'm going to bring this up to around, see if we can focus, around 120. Look at our negative voltage there. So looks like we've got close to 60, uh, 65 on each side. Um, we'll come in here and we'll try to adjust this bias pot just to make sure uh, that it's working 
Let me see if I can find a good tool to do this with. Stand by. All right, this one seems to go in a little easier. All right, so we'll increase our uh, voltage or our resistance. Uh, this is a multi-turn pot and so um, I can really turn this thing to get really really fine results. So I'm trying to let's get the glare. So as I increase the resistance we can see the uh, bias, the negative voltage go down and that's kind of the ballpark of uh, what I was looking for to get these tubes to run a little bit hotter. So I'm just continuing to turn, continuing to turn. Looks like we've bottomed out there. So it looks like we, we've dropped a, a significant amount of voltage. I, I don't remember what it was before. I think it was in the 50, in the 50s, maybe 58. I don't remember. So we're going to move forward um, with installing um, one ohm cathode uh, resistors here so we can uh, measure our bias or our current rather uh, a little bit more easily. So if you've made it this far uh, I sincerely appreciate it. Um, uh, in this video uh, I attempted to try to uh, explain how to measure and modify uh, bias and cathode and grid bias damps and uh, we've modified uh, the circuit uh, to allow the bias to be changed more easily uh, by, by adding a bias pot. In the next video we will install uh, 1 ohm resistors to the cathodes of the power tubes uh, allowing us to measure the current through uh, each tube uh, much more easy. Uh, I'm going to present a new method, a much easier method uh, for setting the bias Earlier we encountered a low volume issue and we're going to finally uh, figure out what that is and uh, resolve it. We're also going to address uh, what we're going to do with the speaker cabinet and speakers. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in part three.